Ackerman, the co-founder of SoCycle and Flywheel, joins us now. Now the founder of True Community. Uh, Ruth, good morning. Good morning. So uh, I'm interested in your perspective on how you think this pandemic will change the fitness business even long term. I notice that True Community, it, you know, e even though you're doing this thing online, trying to connect people to instructors, you're, you're doing it in virtual geographic areas. We are. And my answer to your question is, I think at home working out online is here to stay. People have gotten the chance to get really used to it and they're loving the convenience of it. And uh, even though we're using Zoom, which is a bit clunky, we can really connect with everyone. So they're feeling the same connection almost that they used to feel at the live brick and mortar experience. So, I mean, does this mean that these brick and mortar experiences, which are often in really high rent areas of really high rent cities, that, that they're in, in big danger or even that the premium business model uh, is in big, I mean, are people gonna pay hundreds of dollars to do this virtually? I think the brick and mortar is in danger to a certain degree, and here's why. With at home and online, it's it's kind of a win-win. Instructors actually get to be paid more because there is no overhead, there is no, there are no high rents, and the users get to pay less. I mean, we just started a few weeks ago, and that was our biggest struggle was figuring out the pricing because I'm so used to kind of the elevated boutique fitness price for a class. And we're actually going to lower our prices because we want a wider reach right now. And it's definitely a silver lining from the pandemic. Let me have a wider reach and get more people in having this community um, experience where they get better mentally and physically. For those brick and mortar uh, studios that are still uh, looking to open up, does the math work if they can only have 33% capacity? I mean, is that enough to keep a business uh, afloat in this pandemic? You know, I guess we'll find out. I, I personally have my doubts about it because the experience changes. You know, um, you're spaced much further apart. You're not high-fiving people anymore at the end of a hard workout. You're um, wearing, potentially wearing face masks for a while. It's just, it's a completely different experience now. Do you find that, um, kind of going back to some of the, the digital offerings that you were discussing a minute ago, do you find that... Um, you know, you see competition from free offerings as well. Uh, what is the what is the line that uh, gets someone to actually pay for a class uh, when you can look to YouTube? I've seen uh, workout, um, you know, just lists of different workouts you can do on Pinterest. Uh, what what actually encourages someone to pay for a digital class, even if it's just ten dollars? Absolutely. Um, and that's a really good question because when I was starting this, and again, we just started a few weeks ago, it was how are we going to differentiate ourselves and how can we um, draw on people who will pay a price for the class? For me, it's about picking, choosing, curating your instructor list with really seasoned instructors who already have a following and you're paying up for that experience. Again, um, the community is just as important as the actual fitness class. And for for us, another way we're differentiating is by offering the fitness classes, but we're also going to offer kind of weekly get-togethers on Zoom later in the day where we're going to chat about anything from aging to injury prevention to what was your favorite Netflix show this week. Because at the end of the day, people just want to connect, and in a pandemic, they want to connect more than ever. Hey, Ruth, you know, it's expensive to assemble a gym at your house. Uh, you're never going to replicate the variety of equipment that you get at a gym. And it's going to get easy to get bored, right, uh, over time, even uh, using digital classes. I just wonder, aren't you looking through this period to a time where COVID is not, a, not an acute concern and people are going to want to go back to a communal gym? I am. And, you know, I think we will all you know, miss that experience, the live experience. And down the road, I just think that there will be room for both. I just don't think the at home is going away. People seem to love the convenience. And I've heard from my riders, my users, that they're not giving this up. They love the fact that they can take their favorite instructor at a time that's convenient for them. They don't have to travel across town to find their favorite one. I mean, everything is right there in their living room and they're showering in their own shower and they're doing it in their own time and they're not commuting and they love it.